Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We're back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. We have a very, very interesting topic today, as well as an interesting guest. And uh, I am your certified Greg Wrangler, as <laughs> always, because in the co pilot seat joining me is Greg McDaniel. Himself, yes, I am. Junior Grandmaster. Yes, I am the Junior Grandmaster. You know this about me. That's I right. Did, I did hang out with the Grandmaster today, though. That's of, right. The uh, the T Diddy, as we call him. The T Diddy. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> because just... Greg, you were you were experimenting with the all new real estate uncensored laptop uh, skin that you uh, decided to order, and uh, it sounds like you got some good response. Yeah, I got a lot of good response. I actually went down there. Brian, who's our guest today, uh, came down. That photo you guys saw of me, he was kind enough to take that photo for me, so all of you all could see the the good looking skin. And the in fact, I actually do pre practice what I preach by actually getting my ass down to a Starbucks. Um, wasn't able to pick up any leads, but it's only day one, so give me a fucking break. Um, <laughs> no, absolutely not. No slack for you, Greg. <laughs> and if you guys can see it, Brian is holding up the photo right now um, of what it looks like. And if you guys haven't, go friend me on Facebook, and you can see it in its all its true real glory. <laughs> That's right. God All right, and while we uh, while we wait for people to join us live, if you have not already, just want to speak quickly to anyone that's watching the replay here on YouTube, and make sure to subscribe. And then if you want the audio version just nestled right here between your ears where we so, so belong, so head on over to iTunes and Stitcher and subscribe there, depending on whether you have one of those uh, Apple devices or whether you're the uh, the rest of us with an Android. Yeah, so. because you are Apple, like anti-Apple. Aren't you? Uh, I believe Apple allergic, and this Apple. is coming from a guy who uses nothing but a MacBook Pro almost all day, <laughs> and I'm still Apple allergic. It's very frustrating. <laughs> so, what, 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 hey, by the way, Matt, did you ever go onto your uh, your Android and see if you have uh, Facebook Live yet? Uh, I did not. You you're letting people down, Matt. I really don't think I am. I don't think I am. I am not a one to. I'm not a one to many broadcaster. I enjoy the Matt, lively interaction that Matt, you and I have. We're broadcasting live right now, bud. I I I said <laughs> I do not enjoy one to many. Listen to my words. I do not enjoy one to many broadcasting. Two uh, two to many is my perfect sweet spot. Two okay. or three to the crowd. That's where I live. So I have no interest in doing Facebook Live for myself. What am I going to get on and talk about? Obviously nothing. Moving forward. That's right. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Matt, I'm going to introduce our guest here really quickly. Great. Do it. Guys, this is a, a good friend of mine, Brian. He has been our notary for a th seven to nine or more years uh, with Chicago Title. Uh, he's probably one of the best in the business when it comes to a notary, but he's also an entrepreneur. He has a, a couple different side projects that he's working on, very exciting, interesting, out-of-the-box stuff. And he and, I all, he and I always sit together and try to take over the world and have little mind-melding sessions. And so I wanted to get Brian on um, for a couple of reasons because... You know, he's a notary. Um, he, he sees people coming and going, and he, we were talking the other day about how to identify, you know, where the markets are, either the markets where people are moving from or the market, markets where people are moving to. But what I also want him to, he's going to talk to us today about leveraging your relationships that you have, the people that are around you all the time that you don't always think about leveraging. So, guys, for no other ado, Brian, welcome to the show, bud. Hi guys, thanks for having me. I, I really, really appreciate it, and uh, I'm excited to be here. So thanks, thanks for the great introduction. Hey, my pleasure. It's going to be a great, great, great show today. But Matt, I want to go on the tirade here for a second. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, hang on, I'm just setting my stopwatch. <laughs> like, how many beeps do I need to have in this thing? <laughs> um, two things. One, remember that stellar photo that I put out there of my my my, my blue steel look like. Mm. My, mo my oh, modeling photo. You mean, uh, you mean Wall Street, 19, circa 1986? <laughs> or all my friends, they they think I'm a, mo a watch model now because uh, yeah, the watch right. is so like in charge in there. And yeah, mm -hmm. and so that photo has actually showed me a couple of interesting things, and that's something we're going to talk about as well today is the fact that I, it's about a 50-50 split. Some people you know, thought it was good. Some people thought I looked like an idiot. Some people thought that you know, uh, they, they're they like, who is this guy? I would never talk to him. They wanted the Greg goofy guy back, um, the kind of the friendly guy, and that really started opening me up. And I want you guys to think about this too, is that what if the, the photo that you're using right now is turning people off, physically turning them off, making them sick to their stomach, making them not want to work with you? I mean, Matt, I'm going to throw you under the bus. The, the photo that Matt uses, I honestly th thought he was pissed in the photo the entire time. And Matt said, no, that's me smiling. <laughs> It's so true, and I didn't even think I didn't realize it. It looked to me like I was smiling. <laughs> this is what it looks like, you guys, like this. 
<laughs> and I'm like, how the fuck is that smiling? But um, there, I'm, there's the. <laughs> See, that's a smell. That's yeah, I, got a lot, I got a lot of flack for that picture. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. <laughs> I want to publicly hum- humiliate you, so it's my, my, deal, my job is done here. But um, take a look at, think about how you guys could go, to, go out there and really get your photo redone. Um, what is it telling yeah. other people? And is it vet mad? out the photographer. Like, they need to understand yes. psychologically who you're trying to attract and, and what, your, uh, what your niche is as an agent. They can't just be a good, like a decent, natural light photographer that does this in their spare time. Because be they're pro. not going to understand any of that. Yeah, it needs to be a pro, guys. But go take a look at that. I'm going to desperately go through my Hobbit Nest books here and try to find that the site where you can go and um, get like, where is it? Um, uh, fuck. Okay, I can't find it. I'll figure it out later. But the other thing is, dude. Okay, you guys all know I have a like a super hard on for Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8s. I mean, those are like that's like my car, right? I freaking love these things. So check this out on my wall. Well, there are my Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT8s, right? And so, my business partner, Chris, if you guys have seen walk around back here, he just got one. And we took oh, it out for a freaking house drive today. Eerie. I know, what an asshole. No, I love it. Now I get to drive it, uh, hopefully. Well, we'll see no, if right. I can ever okay. drive it. That thing is a rocket ship. I mean, we were burning rubber all over town. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but... <laughs> But uh, guys, I gotta tell you, if you've never been in one, go get in one. They will blow you the fuck away, I mean, uh-huh. quite literally and figuratively. But there you go. I didn't have any real bad rants today. I just want to tell you about those things. You, you, you could be, you be, could be, you could be pulling a Johnson and pissing people off or making people afraid of you. That's the look Matt has on his photo. That's a smiley look. Um, or and go test drive an SRT. And I'm done. Bam. Cool. All right. Well, what do you say we take a question from the uh, the Facebook group before we uh, dive into the official content of the show? Yeah, let's do it, man. Let's, let's make it rain. Flowing. All right. So uh, so to clarify, and somebody pointed this out, that they, they were not clear what we mean when we say the Facebook group because we don't spe- uh, specify every time. So it is the Lead Gen Scripts and Objections Facebook group. If you just go on Facebook and search for that, that's the easiest way to find it. Uh, it is facebook.com slash groups slash got objections. It's not our group. Uh, it's started by our friend Aaron Wittenstein. So it's just a really good group that me and Greg are both a part of that we pull questions from. So... <clears throat> So Christine Strecker asks, when you are circle prospecting and the homeowner says they're not selling and they don't know anyone who is, what's your next best question to build rapport? So Greg, how would you handle that situation? Well, there's two ways of handling it. There's either going to be the, like, if the guy's just, you know, flat out kind of a dick or whatever else and he's like basically get off my property. Okay, well, hey, thank you much, so much for your time. Have a nice day because you, know, you never know. You might come back and it might be a different answer the next, t- next go around. But what I like to do is uh, once you're approaching the property, um, remember that little tip I, ch- I talked to you guys about? Um, if you're doing calls, this doesn't really work. But if you're doing doors, I mean, this, this will work. Approach the property. Um, find something that you genuinely, genuinely like about the property. It could be the SRT8 Jeep in the driveway. It could be the papers, the front door, the windows, the flowers, whatever, right? Pick something you really like. And then once Matt and Julie you know, tell me to F off, I say, okay, well, uh, can you tell me about the Jeep? I'm looking at getting one. I was wondering how, what you guys' thoughts are. It's just basically taking something that is their touch, their style, their taste, complimenting them on it, and then asking more about it, allowing them to talk about something that they truly like, right, because they picked it out. That builds the rapport. You, know, that's a, you find common ground. So... There's no longer salesy anymore. It's just like two dudes standing on the front porch talking about a bitch and car. That's pretty. That's the way it would go. If it was on the phone, um, you know, I would use the Ford method: family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. And just if you can have a natural segue in at some point, uh, based upon anything that you guys are talking about, go ahead and do that. Or if there's an opportunity to invite them to something, uh, if you're maybe you're calling around uh, for an open house, you know, just get to that part first. Ask you know who they know is going to be selling or buying or whatnot, and then ask them, uh, you know, invite them to the open house or invite them to whatever else. But um, Sometimes, guys, it's the easiest thing to be done is just to walk away, mm-hmm. you know, and just thank them for their time because yeah. you, you can't fit a square peg in a round hole. Yeah, yeah, that's understandable. Sometimes that's uh, they're breaking rapport for a reason, and you just move on. Because maybe you haven't showered in a couple of days, Matt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Brian, what would you? How would you answer that, man? Because Brian is a new realtor, guys. He has joined the ranks of the Walking Dead. Thank you. <laughs> 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 well, that's why I'm watching this podcast, you guys, so I can learn from you guys. I'm just one of the newbies, so I don't know if I have a good enough answer for you. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, if you want to have, throw some at it, go for it. If not, Matt, we'll jump into this thing and start making it our bitch. 
Well, yeah, let's let's do it, Brian. Why don't you have us? Uh, well, let's catch up with you and give give us kind of the uh, the quick bio on how you're coming to now get into real estate with, when you have really a a phenomenally deep background in the industry already. Yeah. So, I, I, kind of just a quick overview about. I've been signing loans for over 14 years. So uh, I've been doing it full time, uh, all around Northern California. So every day I see four to five buyers, sellers, and refi people. So I've, I've done this. So it's 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 a process that I had two bad notaries come to me one time on refis, and I couldn't believe that they couldn't answer some simple questions. So six months, eight months later, I, I had the opportunity to get into the business, and I did. Basically, because of those two bad notaries, they didn't look good, they didn't dress good, they didn't, they couldn't answer simple questions. And I said, you know what? There's an opportunity here, so let's go out and and uh, jump into it. And that's what I did. So from that point, and that was around 2004, or so or yeah, 2002. And since then, that's all I've been doing: buying, selling, and refining properties. It's it's interesting doing this is because I get to do social experiments every day. So mm -hmm. I get to meet the buyers. And where, where, where they're, you know, what they're buying and why. I get to do exit interviews. Why are you buying here? Kind of curiosity. Where else did you, you know, where else did you look? What about the commute? Is the commute going to be further, you know, closer? What about this? What about that? And they tell you. And in many cases, I get to see both sides of the transaction. I meet the seller as well, and I get to see where they're going. And they'll tell you why I'm leaving. You know, and they'll tell you that because I get to, as part of the paperwork. I get to make sure that they fill in the correct address so at the title company we can get them their proceeds or all their final paperwork. So, oh, go ahead. No, no, what I was going to say is that, I mean, that with, I hope people understand how powerful that is because it, when someone can have the opportunity to go network with, with someone like you, Brian, then it's not, it's, it's not that they have to be the smartest people on planet Earth anymore when it comes to identifying the emerging markets, either the ones that are coming in or the ones that are going out. You know, get together with you if you're not, because most of the time, like you, you said for X number of years, you you weren't a licensed agent. Mm -hmm. So it's just like you know what, hey, the, you're seeing this type of people do this type of action. So you can, you know, one potentially build a relationship with an agent anywhere, wherever these people are going to. But you also get to build a model here in the area that you can market to directly, mm -hmm. Facebook, in, in social networking, whatever. You know what that potential seller looks like, and then what actions they're most likely going to take. So if it's a 60-year-old white dude, you know, that's been living here, raised his kids and everything else, well, they're moving up to the foothills a lot of the times. Yep. A lot of Indians and Asian families are coming in from Fremont and Hayward and migrating north into the Standard Moon Danville marketplaces for the better schools and newer homes. People are taking different life changes, so if you know what to look for, you can market directly to them. That's my, that was going to be what I was going to say. You can really get a forward ahead of everything. Oh, definitely. So again, I don't know. I could get. I'm. I'm trying to keep it kind of macro because people all around the country may not know the demographics sure. or the exact layouts of exactly the geographics where we are. Right. So uh, yes, definitely on the micro level, I know cities, streets. I mean, I can. I. I can get really, really micro on it. So, but the 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 thing that is is I get to. I see numbers before they become statistics. Mm -hmm. So. When the county kind of aggregate numbers and it comes out and this is this is what happened in January, that's old news to me because I saw it last week or if not today, hmm. because I can get that data. Like for instance, this morning I have we had some uh, some buyers and they were leaving a particular city, and they were buying in another city, and I've seen the model many times over, and they basically told me that the demographics were changing and mm -hmm. and they they wanted to get out. They just and I, I said, let me guess who the buyer was, and I was dead on. Cash <laughs> buyer. It was it was a cash buyer from another country buying cash. It's just mm -hmm. it's just what it was. It's what it is every day. Yeah. So it, it's it's very very valuable for agents and people out there. For many years, I've tried. I've gone to a lot of the mortgage guys and a lot of realtors and say, hey guys, this is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm hearing. You know, I'm staying in my lane in the notary lane. But you guys should really start to be leveraging some of this stuff, and, and this, this is all pattern recognition. It's really what it is. There's three steps to pattern recognition, well, to, to, to the process. Step one is trial and error. Step two is pattern recognition. Step three is the rule. After so many times, there's only so many variations. This is, this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. so, so with those three steps, I know the people and where they're coming in from. And again, agents can go out and start talking to those people and say why this area is so good. I know the people that are leaving this area and where they're going and why I should be in those areas talking to those people up there, the, the other agents up there who have properties and connecting with the people here that I know. 
Yeah, <laughs> and this kind of information should be affecting where you're running Facebook ads and where you're boosting stuff. If you're taking listings, if you want to run, you know, if you want to advertise for buyers and you you know you want to work in a certain market, you should be able to to research and find the people like you that have that information so that you're advertising. You can point your advertising dollars in the area that actually makes the most sense with what's actually going on on the ground. Correct, and 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 it's it's what I, what I see again. I, again, I'm a neutral third party, and and I have to be. Uh, because of all of the data and, and all, all the, the, the data points and all the dots I connect every day. So it's, it's unfortunate that, the, that a lot of the, the title and escrow people, they're, they're really the ones that, that have all of this at their fingertips. And, and it's unfortunate that, I, that the realtors aren't leveraging that data. And it's one thing to go, you know, to open up pre-sales and open up title reports and do certain things. But there's other data points that they see every single day that I think is, is being underutilized and under leveraged. And I'm gonna go out and, and I'm gonna go out and leverage all of it. So <laughs> and, and that's what I and that's the coolest part about it. It's like a new you 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 you're tapping into something that's that's right in front of everyone, but they don't know what to look for, so they don't they can't see it. So you know, do you want to break down some of what some of these data points are? Um, and so that people can start seeing what's right in front of them? Well, here's here's again. This is what I would do. If, as, if every agent out there typically has their favorite title and escrow person, and again, mm -hmm. let me let me back a little, guys. I know in some states where you guys are watching this that you use attorneys, and then you use the attorneys, and the attorneys do the title, and there may be someone in the office that just kind of touches a few pieces of the paper. Here in Northern California, or throughout most California, and many other states, right. is title and escrow takes all the data from the buyers, the sellers, the counties, the lenders, the brokers, the agents, all the moving pieces all comes together and they connect all the dots. Buyers in one room, sellers in another room or multiple different locations. There, it's, it's that separation of church and state. So I, I'm speaking mainly for the, the data points that I see here in California when, mm -hmm. when I get to touch all those pieces. So, so with, with, with that point, Greg, I got lost there for a second. Go ahead and ask the, ask the question again. <laughs> no. So, I mean, the, so we talk about these different data points, right? These yeah. different you know, information out there. What, what, what do they look like? Because a lot of folks want, with, are sitting there going, okay, that sounds fucking awesome. Uh, where do I start, right? Well, okay. So, so here's what I would do. I, I, I would have the agents. They're going to have their favorite title and escrow person. That title and escrow person is going to have a favorite notary, loan signing professional, closer, typically in their office. Mm -hmm. I, get, I get asked this all the time. Oh, you're not an escrow officer. No, I'm not. But I've done more escrows than most of them combined. You know, I, I've done, it's the 10,000 hour rule. I've done over 10,000 of these and they're usually about an hour a piece. It's, 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 you know, I, I, know my, I know my stuff. And it's unfortunate that a lot of realtors just think that title and escrow are really the ones that need to do all this. And in many cases, there are total pros out there in every region that make a living, quite good living, being a, a professional loan signer. Mm -hmm. And I would find out or seek that person out in your area. Everyone watching this does have a title and escrow person. If not, go get one. And that title and escrow person can recommend, recommend to you the best loan signer in the industry in that area. Find okay. that person, friend them, and say, I want you on my team. I want you to sign all of my clients. I, I want you to be there because when I can't be there, I, I need you to represent me. And, and, and that's really what it is. So when we start to look at those data points, so that was the first thing, is, is find someone in the area that, that, that does this all day long. The, the, the second point is some of these data points is when, when you see buyers saying, well, I, I'm selling in a particular area because I can't afford, right? And, and, and you look at the map and you go, they're not going to go to certain cities just based on schools, based on uh, the demographics, the just the, the just the the affordability, and they they tend to go in certain areas. So knowing that person that's leaving that area, you know that they're let's just for an example say an engineer working in Silicon Valley, the prices are so high that we we know that they can only go one direction. Mm -hmm. And and those data points of knowing whether I'll just give an example Mountain View, Sunnyvale, Cupertino, San Jose, Milpitas, any of the San you know, anything in Santa Clara County. Those guys typically want to buy a house, but they can't afford it there, or they're not going to buy it in a particular school district, or they're not going to buy it because of um, it's it's old, 
Mm -hmm. or it doesn't face a certain way, mm -hmm. or the door, when you open the front door, that there's a window and all of the... the, the, the good luck. The good luck's going to escape. So mm -hmm. when, you start to, when you start to look at that, you start to look at the other areas where houses are being built a certain way in certain school districts, certain sizes that are new, and on, on, and on. So basically, what you're saying, birds of a feather flock together, you know, so that the people, people run in packs or in tribes, and so, so if you were to work with a, if if a agent was to approach a a, a notary like yourself or mm -hmm. someone to that effect, what are five questions that you would ask the real estate agent should ask the notary to get that type of information? Like, where do you see them coming in? What nationalities are you seeing? What age bracket? You know, kind of stuff like that. You you could definitely if if but you have to be careful on that because the notaries are neutral and some of the title companies have assigned NDAs and confidentiality agreements. So but again, the way that I put it out there is it's just observational. This is just what I observe. So when you know, A, where are they going? Mm -hmm. Where like for instance, someone will come in today and they'll, and they'll a buyer today and I'll say, Where else did you look? Well, we knew this area. Well, why? Well, because of I already know why, but because of Schools, new price per square foot, commutes not even on it, not even an option. It's just, it right. just doesn't matter because there's nothing. It just, it just doesn't even factor in anymore. So that would be the one point is to ask them, you know, where else are you looking? Why are you looking there? Uh, again, you guys know all the all, all the, the 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 other you know price points and and how many bedrooms and bathrooms and single you know one story, two stories, things like that. Right. And so I guess what I'm asking here is this, is that, if, okay, guys, if I didn't know Brian and, you know, I was going to go ask some questions like this, this is what I would do. I would come to him and say, hey, look, Brian, can I take you out to a cup of coffee, come buy you lunch? I know you do a lot of signings here in the area. I'm looking to, do, you know, zero down, laser focus my marketing into a specific marketplace is both coming and going. So I'd go up and I would, I would, these are general questions, you know, so that you can hit a mass market. You know, where are you typically seeing buyers for this area coming from? That's the number one thing because you want to get a Facebook ad built. You want to start prospecting directly into that specific area. So let's say San Jose and Fremont. I know that families are coming from there to here. So direct it to it. Thinking of moving to Danville, California. Thinking of moving to San Ramon, California. You know, watch, you know, get a hold of me or whatever else. So once I get an idea of where they're coming from, now I have an opportunity to get in front of them by boosting or buying Facebook ads, LinkedIn, Twitter, um, Instagram ads, any of those that can get ahead of the marketplace depending on who you're going to be speaking to. Second off, I want to be able to understand, I would want to understand from his perspective what people's buying and selling habits are starting to look like and what they've looked like maybe in the past so you can get more or less a historical idea. Maybe these it's a more recent phenomenon that they're coming from San Jose and Fremont. Maybe they were coming from Oakland or San Francisco because they got married, uh, ha we have a baby on the way and we're not going to raise a kid in the city anymore. You don't know where these buyers or sellers are coming from, therefore the demographics and what these people are, I mean, yeah, the demographics are going to you know, change as well. Uh, second off, once they're here, now I can keep start building them and building a relationship with them. We're going to look at the typical time that they're going to be staying in a home. Therefore, I know how to market to that 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 group as well as they're, as they're here. And then, what is the exit strategy? As you were saying, Brian, what is your what is your exit exit strategy looking like? I mean, are they going back down to Fremont, San Jose, and once they've lived here for a while, are they moving up to the foothills? Are no. they move, where are they going? Right. No, typically here in the Bay Area, again, most nine I'd say ninety five, if not ninety nine percent of the people go east. They go away from the bay, right? Yes. So I just I just had a guy not too long ago who sold, who was selling in San Ramon, and he was going west. He was a startup guy, and, and he was going from San Ramon. He wanted Menlo Palo Alto, couldn't get in, so he ended up in Redwood City, and he sold his house. He was going 50% smaller in size and paying 50% more than where he was. And, and he just said, I have to do it. And he was 30 minutes late to our appointment. He says, this is why, because I don't know when I'm going to get home, and it's just, it's just too much. It's killing me. So very, very, very few people go west. So on the east, most people will go east. And if you're looking anywhere in, let's say, San Mateo, like you know Redwood City, San Mateo, Redwood Shores, if they're Oracle people or any, any of the startup people over there, they're, if you, geographically, they're, they're not going to go into Hayward. They're not mm -hmm. going to go into San Leandro. They're not going to go into Union City. Uh, they're not going to go to Castro Valley. They'll come up over the hill, 
Pleasanton is too expensive in many cases. Dublin schools aren't good enough, so they're going to go into San Ramon and Windermere. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just kind of a an observation on my part. And these are typically this particular person I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, I'm, I, that I see daily is an engineer. Um, it's it, it's an engineer with the pregnant wife with the two year old living in an apartment. Mm -hmm. So what it is, and the thing that's interesting that that's come to my attention recently, another little data point that I didn't realize, and in certain cultures, if one person buys and the other person doesn't buy on their engineering team, they're looked down upon. So really? they, hmm. not only do they compete academically, but they also compete in other areas. So if if one engineer buys a house and the other ones don't, they're they're uh, they're they're competitive that way as well. Let's put it that way. Hmm. Interesting. So you should be maybe not asking for. I don't know if they you get a referral out of that situation, but you should definitely be researching who else is on their work team and try to ferret out that information and then uh, figure out how to contact that person directly. Definitely, I, okay. I would. And and Greg had said something about about the Facebook ads. You know, when I'm when I'm looking at it, if you created just a little infographic and you said, you know, high, high, highest rating in schools, you know, new properties with you know price per square foot. This that little that little infographic is going to catch a certain audience's attention, and they won't notice the sponsored by or paid by. You know, those they're going to see that data point first. And if your name's attached to it, it's very very important in my mind. That, that's how, that's what I would do. Okay. Because those are three little bullet points that I hear daily on why people buy. The other thing is is timing. So I had the, the buyer I mentioned earlier today is when we were buying today. Uh, I said, did you miss last year? She said, yeah. How'd you know? So I just, I, I know. <laughs> because <laughs> I the, know. <laughs> because when there's a cutoff date for schools, and if you don't get in by a certain time, or you can't close by a certain day of the cutoff for the school, it doesn't matter because they're buying, they're, they're, they're not going to move in the middle of a school year. It's just that they don't do it. Mm -hmm. So the buyers I had this morning, I said, did you miss last year? And she said, yeah. And I said, okay, so that's why they're buying now, and they'll do a three or four month rent back from March to July. If they buy in April, they'll do it till July, and if May, they'll do it till July or August, and when when it's easier to move. Well, let's talk about that really quick. I mean, that's a great little that's a great little nugget right there that you know people with kiddos or not, whatever, it doesn't matter, kids or no kids. But let's talk about what is that cutoff date, you know, here in the area, and what should people go look for for other similar data points so they can do direct marketing to, for direct action. You know, people with kids from, you know, 1 to, I don't know, shit, 17, 18, you know, for high schools, whatever, and just zero down on that. So what is what, what is what is a cutoff date like that for? You know, I'm, I'm making a little note to myself, you guys, because I can already see the infographic. You do a countdown every day. You see a posting in your feed that says 37 days to you know, to, to the school cutoff date in San Ramon Valley, let's say, or 36 mm -hmm. days, 35 days, 34 days. You start to see that every day, it's going to start to put a little bit of pressure on you, or at least mentally people will start thinking about it. So things like that I think are very powerful because those are, those are timelines and data points. M many times people want to manipulate or adjust, and they can't. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just the way it is. And then some of them, and, and some might be, you know, waiting for cheaper money or certain inventory. It, you just can't do it. Something really interesting, you guys, happened to me on Friday. I had some buyers, and and I said, "Hey, you guys excited?" And they're like, "No, <laughs> <laughs> no." It, well, that's it, what it, you want to hear. It, it caught me off guard, and I was like, "Whoa, what's up?" And they said, "Well, we sold, you know, six months ago, and they were staying at a brother-in-law's house, and they said, well, 'Well, we're buying this house.' Said, well, aren't you excited?'" They said, "No, we're just tired of living here, but there's nothing out there. We just got to get out of here." So they're spending over a million dollars to buy this house that they know they're only going to be there temporarily. Wow. That's only, only in our area is that a, a normal conversation. Yeah, I'm going to spend a million dollars for something I kind of like. It's like that, you've lost your fucking mind. I, Why I, was, you I was like, wow. So I, I'm starting to wonder if that's going to be more – uh, something else that you know that goes back to that pattern recognition. Am I going to start seeing more and more of those people? Because again, based on inventory and and uh, school years and and those things that have to all line up. Mm -hmm. So where would you, where, Brian? So I guess what I'm saying is, so for our area, what is the date uh, that the, the cutoff date? Like like you need to have an address of some sort uh, to for for the schools. Is it 
I, I and, and here's a good. It's probably first or second week of August. You just go to the the community schools page for whatever district that you're in. It's probably slightly different, right, for the different schools in different areas. It might vary by a week or so. That's just something you have to look up, Greg. Uh, yep, and and I think in our our particular area, you guys, I think it's July. It's it's either late June or July because schools start in August now. And so the es here's a good point. Your escrow people will know that because ninety percent of those escrow people will have children in that school district. Mm. So you know that that's a good. Yes, yeah, so the escrow are, people know when they need to be closing on stuff in order for people to actually move and for it to be practical. So mm -hmm. they're doing yep. all those. They're doing all those transactions. Definitely. Yeah. Yep, definitely. Yeah. So uh, okay. So let's get back to kind of like the building building relationships and how how the agents should be using this uh, now that they know that this somebody is out there that has this information. Uh, you know what what else can they be doing or or who else should they be talking to and how can they build those relationships deeper? So obviously there's there's yourself in a notary position. Go out and build relationships with that person. How do you how do you kind of get them on their team and what's really in it for? For the notary, if you start building a relationship with them, if you're not, let's say you're the average agent that's doing, you know, you're successful, you're doing two or three deals a month. Is that enough to catch their attention? Um, and if not, maybe like, how do you go about building that relationship with someone like yourself? Well, it's it, it's one of those things. Like the notaries and there's a perceived hierarchy kind of in our industry, you guys. So at okay. the top, you know, we ha you have the realtors, and then you have the mortgage guys, and then you have title and escrow, and typically the notaries are way down towards the bottom. And but in reality, we we we're the bottom feeders, but we see all the data points, and mm -hmm. and we see that every day. So for for an agent to go out and reach out and say, hey, you know, loan signing pro, notary, we'd love to you know have you sign our clients. Um, and and you, it's kind of an interviewing process as well, because you'll see certain ones, and you'll know, hey, this person knows their stuff. Um, and and in many instances, most don't, and I know that, but there are some really good pros out there. Mm -hmm. And and then just saying, you know, like with Greg and his team, I've I've had to prove myself to them that that I know my stuff, and you 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 just kind of have to be put yourself in the buyer or the seller's shoes and act as if you're that they're, they're you're your own clients. Um, in in regards to finding the notary, saying, hey, I'd love for you to have you on my team. You know, I'd love to have you available. Do you work with these other title companies? Because all of us work with all the major title companies. Um, and make sure that they, you know, have a good reputation as well. Because you can ask around, because the good ones do have good reputations. Okay, so, so. The, the the so the repayment back to the <clears throat> the, uh, the the notary would be basically business, right? Because we can requ request you and say, look, I want Brian to sign my people, right? Yep. So that's yeah. that's the, that's the way we scratch back. Okay. Definitely, and again, it's and it's good for the notary to build that book of business because then they start to realize, hey. Even though I'm 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 kind of this island out here, but in a way, it, it is a nice feeling to know that I'm part of, you know, uh, the McDaniel's Callahan team because I know those guys. Those guys are pros. It's gotten to a point where where I get to pick and choose now who I work with because I know the good ones. I know the good lenders. I know the good title people. I know the good realtors. I know who's who's going to take care of everything. Who's going to show up and be present and have everything lined up versus the ones that are faxing and scanning everything over at the last minute and and and, and they don't have their stuff together. What's a fax? Well, <laughs> title companies, title companies still use faxes because the lenders, the lenders will fax over demand statements, and they they'll, they'll fax because they say it's safer. They get so. safer, my ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we actually got a fax, uh, a fax. Good lord, you guys check out the steel trap right there. Working hard as always, Eileen. Give them a thumbs up, high five. She is so excited about that right now. Just doing a happy dance. Uh, if she was a leprechaun, she'd be doing like a, like a tap. But um, she, we actually, one of our clients was requesting a fax all weekend. So I haven't literally heard that word in years. And he was like, yeah, just fax it over, fax it over, fax it over. And Eileen's like, fuck off. Uh, no. <laughs> they have this thing called email now. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, a, it's amazing some of the technologies that people get get hung, hung up on and they, did, they never get off the train. It's like some people's you know wardrobes you know, are still stuck in the 80s and they got off that fashion train a long time ago. Um, but it's the same thing about technology. Um, the other relationships that are really funny that you might want to start you know building relationships with, I mean, as weird as this is going to sound, guys, we are going to be doing a sell by you know, uh, with a client that we locked in from doing my my calls, but the way we got confirmed in as the the person to use was through our photographer. Now we use a guy named Dean from All Access Photos, 
pretty much everybody here in the area does. But when I showed up for the listing appointment, it was just straight up like, you know, hit, hit the bullet points. And by the way, do you know, do you know all access? I'm like, oh, yeah, Dean, we use them for everything. We, I don't think we, we would not have gotten that, that, that double-sided deal uh, if we had not been, made a good relationship with our photographer. So you never know who every, everybody else knows uh, when it comes to leveraging your network. That's why you know doing Popeyes and really building, doing the Ford scripts and really going deep and asking questions is very, 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 very powerful and important. We'll go sit in your happy ass down down at Starbucks where Brian and I got to just you know chat for a while today about all kinds of other stuff. And by the way, guys, Brian is the guy that introduced me to Blab, to Meerkat, to Periscope. Um, I don't know what else you introduced me to, but he's a he's very savvy when it comes to tech as well. And he runs in, in in a couple of different circles, but you know, leverage your scenario, leverage your group. So who else would you go out and start, you know, talking to? Who would you go out and start really building that relationship or building that bond or reinvent or re um, re in introducing yourself to someone? What does that look, Matt? <laughs> I'm waiting for the word to come out. <laughs> and today, re, re, what, reinvigorate, re-energize, <laughs> re-fraternize. Uh, yeah, sorry. You're re re. Um, your little re re yeah, reintroduce yes yourself okay. to the market in a different way if you're getting into the business you know or you're you know get, stepping back into it from maybe a little bit of a break you know a lot that's what I would say just go deeper on the relationships but um, yeah well it's like we you know that one question I asked Jay Jay Samet remember that to when I asked him like how does he keep up on the pulse of what's going on with technology and disrupting developments and all this stuff and he's like well you hang around with the people that are doing it yeah like yeah. Bing. <laughs> yeah, which is this yeah. this is the real estate version of that, which is if you want to keep your keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening in your market, it's not necessarily the websites you read and the newspapers you read. Just hang out with the people that actually do it every day and uh, just talk to them and ask them what's going on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If we want to improve your sphere of influence, guys, if you happen to be the smartest person in the room, oh shit, that's a big problem. Um, but <laughs> go out and start. I don't out. think I have that problem very often, Greg. Oh god. <laughs> let's. <laughs> um, but you know, let's go go change your environment. Um, like the reason, whole thing. I'm like, I'm trying to open my sphere, trying to get more people to meet, like, hang out with people like Brian, right? I want to go out and, and and really chat with more intelligent human beings, which then can connect me into better situations and start building those those dialogues. And I would go change, go step up wherever you're hanging out. If you're hanging out at Joe's, the local, you know, hole in the wall, you know, bar. Well, don't drink on a fucking Wednesday, first off. But, you know, once you go and you, once you go step it up to a restaurant, if you're still going to have to have your beers, you know, at 12 noon, uh, then, uh, first off, that's horrible and you're not going to last in this business. But um, you, you should change it. You change your environment all the time. You know, Josh is going to, is doing a, um, uh, is doing a 60-day uh, 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 challenge that I, that I offered up to everybody. And they have to go out. And uh, he has to go out and change it up to a different different environment every single every single day, um, and he has to go and sit there for an hour at a Starbucks or anything else. So you know, I, I think about that for yourselves when you want to make a better relationship. Well, Brian, there was something that you mentioned before we went off or before we went on the air uh, mm -hmm. that I wanted to uh, to ask you a little bit more about, and that's kind of the the role that you've taken out. And I don't know if this is something that. Uh, I'm curious if this is something you took upon yourself or if this is something that a good notary should be doing and maybe just not all of them are, but you mentioned that uh, a lot of your role is bringing together all the disparate kind of people that all have their own language in the transaction and almost acting as a translator for the buyer or the seller. So tell me more about that. So it, it, in many cases, when, when I sit down with the buyer, the buyer has talked to their realtor, they've talked to their lender or mortgage broker, they've talked to title and escrow, and then here comes me with the big stack of papers, you know, saying here, sign everything. So, and what happens in many cases is that everyone speaks a different language. So realtors have their language, title, escrow, lenders, all of that. And people start asking questions. And what I, I refer to myself as a translator. So, because I know the real side, the realtor side, I know the title, escrow, and, and all those pieces. Because from their point of view, they expect a lot of times the agent to know everything. Or if the lender shows up, they expect the lender to know everything. Um, but really kind of title and escrow is, is kind of the ones that take all those pieces and connect all the dots. So that's what I've done. So when people come in, there's typically six different scripts I have depending on a first-time home buyer versus an engineer, first-time home buyer versus an attorney. 
you know, I can get, drill down on attorneys and immigration and environmental attorneys are usually readers versus mm -hmm. prosecution and family law, a little different. So we can, we can kind of profile and get into that. But when you sit down and you just kind of have to, to, to pick up on people really fast, that whether they're going to sign fast, do they want condensed version, do they, are they going to, are they, the person that opens up their laptop and they pull out their, or they open up their own amortization schedule is going to be a different buyer than a guy who just comes in with, with, you know, with, with paint all over his hands because he's a painter and he has to go back to his job site. Yeah. So, you know, being that translator, but it's also being able to pick up on those, those other mannerisms and those other pieces. But to that, you just, when, when, when you're, when you're talking to somebody uh, and, and breaking down the loan or breaking down the closing costs, or breaking down prepaid interest or taxes or whatever it is, it's it's crucial that your loan signer and someone on your team understands that stuff because uh, it, it can really make or break the finish line of your deal. Yeah, that's I don't everything. Know, I don't know how many times you guys, when someone will walk into a room and I'll say, hey, is this it? Are you, is your agent showing up? And they're like, huh, I hope not. I was like, whoa. whoa. You know, like, well, I can kind of gauge right then have you tell me if he's showing up? I don't know. I haven't talked to him. Have you guys talked to him? So we so right then I know I have to go into a different mode to try to to to, to make the, right. to make it go smoother for the next forty five minutes while I'm sitting with him. I think Greg just had a tiny aneurysm. <laughs> well, but, but but to be honest with you, this is kind of this is why I, I was why I I really kind of gravitated towards Greg and over the years is because that's never happened. And I'm not just saying that. I get. I see the really, really good people, and I get to see the really, really bad ones. So why would I invest my time with people that that aren't out without yeah. the, not the good ones? You know, it just yeah. doesn't doesn't make sense for me. That's not the type of business I want to do anymore. Well, and and vice versa. I mean, it was I talked to uh, I think it was Jeff Cohn about this on some other pang out a while back, and he was talking about how important it was for referrals that he put together a team of people. The the, the title, of the escrow lender, the whole nine yards, like every. Every person, every position on every step of the way had to be some of the best in the business because all it takes is one person to dropping the ball on one thing and your buyers or sellers come out with a bad taste in their mouth from that trans that transaction. It could have had nothing to do with you. However, you are responsible for the team that you assembled to the extent that you can get them to use the people you want them to use. But assuming they do, assuming they take your recommendation and they work with the best, uh, that gives you much more a better chance of them having a good taste in their mouth coming out of the transaction and being being able to refer you and being willing to refer you a year and two years down the line when you want them to. Uh, and that's been a real key for him uh, in order to generate referrals. I mean, for, for the longest time, he worked off of uh, referrals almost exclusively because he was very, very careful about who he worked with in the transaction and who he allowed to work with his clients. And I don't think most agents really take that into account enough. They're probably well, selecting the people that were, they work with in terms of lender-vendor partners based more on personality and personal connection than on uh, extreme competence. It, and you just, you just said something that you don't know how many times over the years I've walked into appointments and people look at me and they go, you, you, you kind of know this stuff, don't you? Because <laughs> the, last, the last person that came here just said sign here or, or they couldn't answer my questions. The, the agents don't realize some. I, I used to call it a notary lottery because, in many instances, when you're up against a deadline, up against a lock, a contract, you the title and escrow are scrambling on a Friday, 5:30. Docs come in at four. Mm -hmm. Your clients have to sign. They're traveling, and like these people need to sign. Well, now with the new CD and trid, you can't do that. But in the old days they're scrambling. All the good ones are booked. The good ones book up fast. So mm -hmm. then they call a service and the service says, well, yeah, we can get someone out there. You don't know who it's going to be. And that person's, it, it, it's, it's a disaster. And if the agents allow that to happen, they must not care much about their clients, in my opinion, because to let them, like, like you said, Matt, at that, at the finish line, let someone come in and that could wreck or ruin the deal is, is, it's sad. <laughs> it's really sad. Well, and they're shooting themselves in the foot. I mean, it, so it's one of those things where it comes back around on you. Oh, it could, and many, many times people haven't signed be because they a, they don't feel comfortable with the notary. The person couldn't answer the questions. They're upset because the agent doesn't show up, or the lender, or the docs are wrong, or the fees aren't this, and they didn't tell me this, and I'm not signing. Notary leaves. 
now now it's a Saturday, Sunday. They they can't get in touch with the people because the realtor's off skiing or golfing or doing something else, and it's 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 it, it it's really yeah sad. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. I could go oh, on. Greg. Think Greg, also... Greg could go on. Well, Greg could go off. Let's put it that way. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I could. What's that bit you have about? Uh... Uh, good people protecting protecting good people from oh, bad brokers. Keep, keeping good people away from bad brokers, which is sadly <laughs> the the truth, and it is it is it is pathetic the quality of the, of the average agent, not the agents that listen to this show, of course, Matt. Right? No, because uh, they're being we educated. Have, we we have we have we have S M R T. I mean S M A R T. Real estate agents. <laughs> that was a, I was. Uh-huh. <laughs> that, that was a, that was a, I did mean to do that one. That was <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's wrap up this this portion of it. We'll take one more question from the uh, Facebook group, and then we'll send this puppy home. So, Brian, first of all, let us know just how people can contact you if they're in your area, and kind of outline what your area is that you would like to work in, and if okay. people would like to refer business to you. Nice. So I, I'm I'm located in the Pleasanton area, it's where I live, but my hub is kind of the Danville area. Right now, I, I'm trying to stay within that 680 corridor. People know that that mm-hmm. you know Alameda Contra Costa corridor. But I'm I'm back out on the road again, doing Santa Clara, San Mateo counties, and just to just to get more data points right now. And when I go out and do that, I get to be in people's homes and see certain things and 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 see see things that are very important to me. Some other data gathering that I'm working on. So the easiest way to get in touch with me, you can you know email me, and it's Brian B R I A N at uh, Brian, B-R-I-A-N-K, Gilman, G-I-L-L-M-A-N.com. So Brian at Brian K. Gilman.com. Uh, my number is 925-895-5300. Those are the two easiest ways to get in touch with me. And if you got, you guys can text me at that number, and I'll, I'll get right back to you. Yeah, you guys definitely need to do it. He's the best notary in the business. I swear to God, if I have other people, you know, sign us, I am not comfortable. So he is 100% true on that. Um, okay, guys, we were talking about the uh, app earlier on in the show that you could go and upload a photo to, and then people will judge you and see what their thoughts are without knowing you. Um, it's called PhotoFeeler.com. So photo and then F-E-E-L-E-R, PhotoFeeler.com. It's a free or a paid service. Go ahead and just do it for free, guys, which means you go out and vote on other people, and then they'll give you credits. You need 10 credits for to get started, and they'll upload a photo, and people will judge you and see if you're an asshole or a nice guy. A um, couple of other things, Matt. Uh, Andrew out of L.A. took the MCC. He had us up today um, and wants to j- jump on that train. Um, Frank from Tennessee had uh, Alex, his assistant, reach out to us today for some door knocking flyers. She said that Frank uh, really loves our show and that we're do- that he you know really likes what we're doing. So Frank, what up, player? Uh, hope you hope those uh, door knocking flyers are helpful for you. And then Matt, I'm going to absolutely destroy this poor young lady's name because I'm dyslexic dickhead. Um, I think it's Andrea. <laughs> wow, that was that was impressively bad, even for you, Greg. <laughs> So, Andrea, she just hit me up, I believe, uh, via text that she found our show, Matt, and has very impressed, very thankful for what we're doing. And I'm getting more and more com- uh, comments that uh, people are starting to binge us, like the people do for, um, you know, like Netflix. Like, I find something good on Netflix, man. You can- you're not seeing me for the next couple of days. And that's what their people are doing with us. But you guys so you really- heard it here. We are the Game of Thrones. We of, are the Game uh, of Thrones. Day, but thankfully with fewer sex scenes. <laughs> oh. Nasty. <laughs> well, we did talk about threesomes last time. Um, we did. When? Yeah. When was I? Did I miss something? Did, was no, I not hosting no, that particular show? No, 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 oh, no, no. Anyway, no, we don't need to. We don't need to revisit anything. That was awesome. I, but I, I totally, uh, I just knocked you down, and you're just like, ah, damn it! I was going to uh, use that on you. Uh, that? I must, I must have, I must have blocked that from my memory for that, that tra- the trauma of you getting one up on me. It happens a lot. Yeah. Um, guys, at Realtor Magazine, I was interviewed to, uh, on a piece uh, in Realtor Magazine in August. Uh, I'm going to be coming out in their edition. But the gal, her name is Melissa, who wrote it, uh, wrote one in the brand new Realtor Magazine, which should have just hit your your hands. And, you know, the, the one the blue cover here. She wrote a really interesting article about virtual reality and how it's going to be could be affecting um, real estate coming down the road. So take a look at that. She got some pretty interesting, pretty interesting stuff in there. Oh, Mark, uh, Mark Guzman, um, he's the head of our YPN man. Uh, he's going to go down and get a decal, uh, a, a sticker for his computer, and a couple other people are too. 
So you guys or, go do it. You guys want their real shit uncensored logo or just their own? I think just their own. But if you guys okay. want to go down and help support the show, guys, we would love to see a photo of a real estate uncensored, um, you know, sticker on your computer, helping us spread the word, get more folks out there learning how to do this the right way. So next time you guys are doing a deal, you can actually have someone with somewhat of intelligence on the other side of that table, not just some ne- you know bumbling Neanderthal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my god okay um, yeah, is that the end of, have you reached the end of your shout outs Greg um, before you accuse anyone else of being a troglodyte <laughs> so, uh, it's not an accusation if it's true Matt okay. um, we're at 1652 uh, viewers Matt we've jumped a significant amount since our last time we were, uh, we're, we were together so I thank think we've you jumped 75 subscribers on YouTube in only 3 days oh my lord you guys are amazing <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. unfucking believably awesome. I thank you. We love you. You're awesome. I'm gonna give you high fives. Boom. Good job. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, finish this out real quick. Uh, I'll give a one quick shout out to Viral Marketing. Just want to thank them for making uh, hangouts and podcasts like these happen. Uh, they do a phenomenal job of running Greg's real estate video blog there in the East Bay area. So you can check them out at getviral.com. And then uh, if you want to help support the show and get more compressed and condensed knowledge for yourself with definite action plans for farming, uh, go to the website, mcdanielrealestatesystems.com, and click on the real estate farming link, and you'll be taken to the page that shows you uh, everything that's in that video training course that we have on farming. Uh, and then obviously you can support the show at patreon.com slash reu podcast if you want to just donate a few bucks a month to help support the gals that run all the back end uh, stuff uh, booking the guests and setting up the hangouts and all, all the stuff that uh, me and Ooh. Greg are, are allergic so to much. doing so much so much Matt Ooh, so there is so much it's ridiculous okay so uh, we'll finish off with one quick question wait wait Matt don't we have big news uh, we're we talking about uh, Smile Time? Yeah, we're, we got our stuff built on Smile Time. We're yes. going to be launching here soon. You guys are going to be able to interact with us live uh, when we're shooting these. You can ask us questions. Ask us this questions. Jesus, what's wrong with me today? <laughs> you need a coffee. <sighs> I need organic carrot juice, man. That's what I need. That's right. It's your super, it's your, the anti-kryptonite. It's your super yeah. juice. Super. Okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah, Smile Time will be up and running. We're looking at doing, uh, we're going to do some training on it this week and then probably run our first uh, maybe live episode on it next week or the week following when we'll let you know how you can interact and how you can potentially join the show and get on the video uh, with us or if you just want to comment uh, and see your, you know, like so your comments show up live right on the video feed so everybody can see it's going to be awesome. So yes, we are excited about that. I did forget that. Yeah, it's going to be super, super, super cool. Guys, I'm doing a live Facebook feed, uh, live Facebook uh, videos. So you guys, go friend me on Facebook. Go find me, friend me. I am really nice. Um, and you'll be able to get some little tidbits of goodness uh, beyond what you just see here. Um, it's a lot of fun. Love to interact with you. I want to hear from you guys a lot more. Okay? I love talking to you. It makes my day. Yeah, it's true. And uh, all right, so one last question. What do you say? Okay, let's do it, okay. bud. So uh, get once again from the same Facebook group, so Tanya... Pomeroy Wagner asks, Hi, I'm a new agent for about three months now. I'm having a hard time opening up and getting on the phone to call expired listings. Any suggestions on what I should say once I get them on the phone? First off, why are you calling expireds as a new agent? That's like the hardest thing you can do. You're going to get yelled at, yelled at and bitch slapped more times than not. Why don't you guys go talk? Why don't you go talk to someone nice? You know, why don't you go talk to someone that doesn't hear people that were just slapped in the face by Greg at a coffee shop, for example. I mean, pretty <laughs> much pretty much anyone. Yeah, someone who's, you know, dog was just run over by a car. Uh, yeah. Their kid came back with pink hair. Many, many people who would love to talk to you before an expired yes. listing. Wow. Dude, expired listings, they, have, they they have a visceral hatred towards you, okay? They literally loathe your existence. They would rather see you burn at the stake than, it, than talk to you. So why don't we go focus on people who actually want to do it? So go pick any other human except for Matt. Don't talk to Matt. Matt, don't, Matt, no, no. He's just as bad as an expired. But... <laughs> 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 just as bad as an expired. Really? Yeah. All right. <laughs> and here I thought I was a nice person. Oh, uh, well, uh, no. So, anyways, so what you guys want to go do is, well, so, sorry, but we got off topic with picking on Matt. Um, got, seriously, if you're, gonna, if you're going to put yourself through that pain and agony, um, what you need to do is you just need to, one, get off your ass and really make the phone calls. I don't talk about making the phone calls. And two, be ready to get your ass hand it to you. And once they, you know, jump down your throat and kick your tonsils in, you know, basically say, thank you very much. May I please have more? 
offer value to them, you know, maybe or maybe don't call, them, maybe go by and drop off a nice little friendly booklet or something, you know, about the market, about you know what the places are doing, give give a little history about what what's going on about that time of year, something as a value to them. But honestly, just don't fucking do it, man. Just walk away. You know, no one to quit. Go go talk to go talk to people like me. But but if you're going to do it, this is something that that helped me because it's it's funny when I got into real estate back in '07, uh, that Ooh, is what I did. Uh, yeah, don't even get me started, Greg. How dare you? <laughs> you young millennial. You're you. three years younger than you're three years older than I am. Anyway, <laughs> call me old. So uh, so when I got into it and and I did go after expired listings, but here's what helped me. So with the phone calls, they're not fun. I don't know that they're going to get fun. You have to really have a personality to do those consistently. Um, Aaron Wittenstein, uh, that the guy that founded that Facebook group we referenced, is one of those guys. Like he loves the uh, he loves the fight. He loves like you know. The verbal Aikido and like taking that aggression and spinning it and getting them excited uh, and just like pressing them and getting the appointment and pressing through that objection. I'm not that guy. So what helped me to make the phone calls was really getting to know and getting my scripting together for the listing consultation. So it's mm -hmm. there. There's a point where if you're you're fearing something, if you're fearing the next step, uh, sometimes like educating yourself on what that next step is and knowing that you've got your your proverbial shit together. So when you go into a listing appointment, you know what you're going to say and you know how you're going to present what you're going to do for them as a client mm -hmm. will sometimes knock the edge off the fear of the phone call because you know if they say, yeah, come on over today at 4, you don't panic and go, oh, crap, what do I do now? Does that make <laughs> sense? Like, so it's sometimes you need to go that extra step and learn, okay, what's I need to, I need to get educated on what the next step is so that if they have me over, I'm okay with it, and that way I don't fear picking up the phone and fear the success of actually setting the appointment. Yeah, get, you have to get them on the value add rocket ship like we've talked about a million times. And when you when you when you get there, you're just bringing value after value after value. And if they don't like you, well, fuck you. And I'm gonna go find someone who does, because you know if they're too dumb to see your value, then you need to find, go find someone who can see your value. And they will eventually. They just they just loathe you at the moment. Yeah, That's yeah. All. And you do really do have to keep up with them. So three months in the business, it's tough. But you can do it, but you do have to hang in there. And sometimes the best ones to contact, if you're going to contact expireds, and we talked about this, I think it was our last episode, uh, is to go back and pull six-month-old expireds, not ones that just expired yesterday yeah. and are getting 30 calls from agents today. Yeah, don't call Matt, Julie, and his three obese babies when when you know Matt just got his whole night yelled, being yelled at by Julie because he couldn't pick a right, the right agent. And then he's licking his wounds, and then you show up on the phone, and he's going to unload on you. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, if you really want, if after you know licking your wounds from getting your butt kicked up one up up one street and down the next for on the expireds, why don't you go do a circle prospecting around a property that just sold in the area for over what it was listed for in a short amount of time and give people good news, and do that way. You'll get a lot of nice comments and a nice reaction there. That's true. All right. Well, with that, uh, hopefully you got some value out of that, and, and I know you got value out of what Brian had to say. So go out and develop relationships with the top notary uh, in the area, and, and obviously that advice extends also to title and escrow and, and lender vendor partners. Make sure you're working with high quality people. If you want to work with Brian specifically, if you're in the areas uh, that he mentioned in the Bay, uh, so it's briankgilman.com. Gilman is G-I-L-L-M-A-N. So make sure that you check that out. So Brian, thanks so much for being on the show today. We appreciate course, it. Guys. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's been a blast, and uh, I really appreciate it. Maybe yeah. you'll have me back someday. I hope. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. man. It won't be. It'll be awesome. And guys, on Wednesday show, uh, we got a great guest. Uh, one of my long, 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 long time lenders that I've used. Literally, I think I've used him for the, my entire career. His name is Casey Dorlich. Uh, he's going to get on and talk about private equity um, and some out of the box ways of funding and what you can do with some hard money and where to get it. So. And of course, all kinds of other fun stuff. So look right. forward to Wednesday. It's going to be a great interview, just like today's was. Yeah. And then on Friday, we've got the uh, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Lars Hedenberg. So yeah. that's going to be a good one, too. That's going to be cool. huge, man. That's going to be a huge. blast. That's right. All right. Cool, guys. Well, that is it for us today. We'll see you guys back here on Wednesday. Thanks so much. All right, guys. Bye. Bye.